All right, today we're going to discuss the retro from a wedding that we did. This was only our second wedding, and they booked us originally with the trailer. Yeah. But I don't think we're, we're open to anything, but I don't think they were uh, considering the possibility of extreme temperatures. Right, the way the weather changed too pretty rapidly between booking, site visit, and then when it actually happened. Right. I think they booked in December or November. I don't remember. They reached out in, in no, either late November, early December, and I gave them some pricing, which was full pricing, but also not pricing that was set in stone. Okay. And that was before we ran a promotion to try to get more weddings uh, booked, and we all had a, a massive discount. So when I gave them the pricing, I didn't really hear back, and I don't know if it was coincidence of they just didn't get back in time or we were too expensive and they were going to ghost us. But then I had reached back out because it's kind of a good gesture to just let them know you're having a promotion. Right. So I reached up. back out and I say, Hey, FYI, we're running this holiday sale for weddings specifically. Here's the pricing. Here's the deal. And they responded like the same day or the next day, like, Oh yeah, this is perfect. We're planning a book. So I don't know if they're planning the book after the fact. Yeah. Either way. They booked and it was great. Um, they booked the trailer for two hours uh, for hot dogs and burgers. And then we did a site visit because I think we mentioned this before, but we want to always know what's going on with our ability to use our equipment where, when, and how. So we did a site visit to this facility. We got to meet the lady on site, uh, the event coordinator. And this was at a open industrial space in the West Loop. Yeah, they were pretty excited with that we were there too, right? That we did the site visit, like maybe an unexpected gesture on our part, but it's pretty normal for us to do it at all our events. Right. I don't know how many other like late night food people do a site visit. Right. Like how many food trucks are coming in? Like, I'm going to come first. You yeah. know, like uh, they were telling us how they have a garage door that comes up and you can pull, you know, if, it, if it's not a certain height, you can pull in and come inside and we were really excited about that idea. We quickly realized the trailer wouldn't be able to go inside because it's too tall, but the hot dog cart, no problem. Do you have anything to add on that? Um, no. I mean, not from the site visit or anything until the day of. Yeah, it, I, I like I love their reception. They were surprised again, uh, and, and they, they welcomed the site visit. The place was awesome, just being an industrial space, being more open, we knew it would be accommodating. Before we knew we were bringing the cart and we were bringing the trailer, obviously we knew that yeah, the weather could be not favorable for them, but it was cool that we'd just be able to pull up and – it would just work. So, you know, and when they pivoted to the cart, that was cool too. So Yeah. And I think the cool, the cool thing about this also, that's how it came down. They found us on Google. I think most people are just searching us. It helps be on Roaming Hunger. Maybe yep. they found us on there. I think a lot of people go to Roaming Hunger and then they just reach out on their own, yeah. which kind of sucks for that platform, but it gives us exposure. Right. Exactly. Um, so we ran this promotion where it was like, you know, $1,200 to feed anywhere from 150 to 250 people. So you're paying less than $10 a person. Um, and it's that's ranging from like five to $8 or something. I don't know, uh, a person and it's full service. So they come up, they order, we top the food for them. We make the Chicago dog. So something we really like about that, even though it's more work is from, from my perspective, mm -hmm. it gives a better presentation for everything that we do. Because someone who's drunk or just trying to get a quick hot dog and throw condiments on there, it doesn't look the same as if I or you build a Chicago dog the way we believe it's supposed to be built and yeah. hand it to them, present it like that. And the way you see some people's face light up, like, oh, right. shit. Right. It, it definitely adds like a, a bonus to it or... It fulfills the expectation too of why they're they're probably booking this car, Chicago hot dog cart, right? It's not just laying food on a table and do it yourself with all everything. Right. So. We're we're cooking everything fresh on site and we're topping it as well. And so when, yeah. when you see someone's face light up, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Cause it because when, when you make the Chicago dog right and you see that, it's like a mountain of stuff on your thing, but it's put together yeah. and you can eat it. Like it's it's edible versus yeah. Some places run it through the garden, like they say, but it's a, oh, man, it's a swap show. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then with our promotion, which I think was a pretty good deal, 
Uh, I think the average spend on late night food is like fifteen hundred to two thousand. So we were only charging twelve hundred for this. Right. Um, well, we quickly gave them the option of the food cart, and I'm glad that we have these two pieces of equipment because it definitely might have been a deal breaker bringing the trailer because it was in the middle of January oh, man, yeah. and it happened to be like negative ten out. Yeah. And so nobody would have come to eat. We wouldn't have had the opportunity to serve good food. We wouldn't have been able to like put on this display of like, look at the late night food that the bride and groom had, you know, that feeling of like, oh, they're really like going out for them. Nobody was going to want to come outside and get food. They would have had to be really hungry. You know what I mean? Like come out in negative 10 degrees. We're warm. And just naturally for late night food, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's winter, right? It's cold. But the timing of the day, the coldest part is going to be at night. And what we start serving at 10 o'clock, right? Just for late night wedding food. They already had their dinner and everything, but it's just going to only get colder at that point. It's only going to get less favorable conditions, right? So Yeah. So that's, I'm just, I'm really glad that they pivoted to the cart and we were more than willing to do that. Oh, so the process though, like with a wedding, there are like certain scenarios where we have a contract or we kind of don't have a contract. We don't care about it, but it's so common in the wedding scene to have a a catering contract or a contract for whatever your service is. Um, And it's super standardized. And if, if you're listening and you're, a vendor or a caterer and you don't have that just utilize chat gpt to, to like get the foundation of a catering contract down for your business and then you can refine it and you can do whatever that that's kind of what we did we're that's able to re- it, right yeah. customize it right and now we can tailor it to these different events to make sure that we're getting a written agreement along with payment so that you don't screw yourself because yeah. you you want to collect payment to make sure that one it, it like Collecting cash up front is good for your business. It's good cash flow, like standard procedure, right? But then this written agreement is saying like, I'm agreeing to what you're saying you're going to serve and you're agreeing to supply the services you're saying you're going to supply. It just kind of gets everyone on the same page, even if you're not going to execute that uh, on someone like failing to uphold their end. Right. It's just like if someone does that, they understand what they're getting themselves into. And so it's just good, and it also look, makes you look more professional. I was about to say, it gives a, a level of another level of seriousness to all of it, right? Right. It's like, hey, these guys don't mess around in a good way. I think they're going to show up. They I know we're going to fulfill our end of it. Right. And this is one of the most important days for in a lot of people's lives, right? They're spending the most money, the commitment and everything. They probably don't want to have to worry about, is that food going to show up? Is that going to be fulfilled, right? And are, are we going to roll in in a professional way? Are, are we going to be fully prepared? Because also for late night food, when you come in, we're going to start serving at 10 o'clock. It's not, they're, they're, they're parties going on, right? They're, they're doing their thing. They're, they're not trying they're to make sure it. it's all going smooth for us. Right, exactly. And they, it's, you know, like, hey, everyone pause. We need to make sure the hot dog guys get to their spot in the area. Like, stop dancing, stop drinking, you know? Yeah. They're hours into their celebration. The magic should just be at 10 o'clock. They just come eat their food. Right. right. We're supposed to just show up and disappear like it never happened. Yeah. Um, and that, that that was a great point, what you were saying, too, because it just makes everything seem so more so much more reliable. Yeah. You could Uber Eats or have a delivery set up for White Castle Sliders or uh, McDonald's Burgers, whatever it is. Yeah. But there's a chance it doesn't come. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's a, there's a decent chance. I don't know what the odds are, but so, I mean, I don't know. I guess with all of those things in the back of my mind now and knowing that when you're when people do certain things from a business perspective you kind of have a inkling of knowing who's reliable and who's not and i would always err especially if pricing is similar to have a a professional like an actual small business come and do yep. do the work for you instead of trying to get a fast food chain even though the fast food chains are delicious i would say if they're reliable why not but you yep. don't know it's depending on your area you don't know just the fact that we're going to be completely concerned about that you know yeah it's not for the bride or groom to worry if it's like ready or anything yeah Hundred percent, and that's that's what I like too about being able to bring our equipment. Yeah, uh, the allure of the hot dog stand being in Chicago. Yep. This was our first. This was our second wedding, but our first wedding indoors. Yeah. So it was a proof of concept for us as well to to be able to bring this. And and nobody, what I love about our process is that nobody really second guessed our ability to fulfill our yeah. services. That's and true. and if they would have asked us. How many weddings have you done? We would have said one. One. <laughs> how, how many have you done inside? We would have said none. none. Yeah. But the way we come off, the way we approach things, the way we follow up with an email, give them a call, say we're going to come do a site visit. Yeah. Uh, that it, it, we're going to send the contract. We're going to give you an official invoice that the, it's coming from QuickBooks. It's all you could pay online. You could pay 
cash, bank transfer, you can pay credit card. It's it's very official, I think. And that's like really lends to the fact that if you just go above and beyond, you can't get experience without having experience. But if you come off like some Joe Schmo, you're you're not gonna get the But then you could also act as if, right? right. And have confidence. I think that's a good thing about us. Even I'm probably the one that get, tends to get more anxious or nervous about situations. But when we roll up and we get there, we buckle down and we know we're just here to fulfill our services, right? Again, specifically this event, it was, what did we roll up? It was negative four degrees. We weren't exactly sure what door we were, we were pulling into. We know there was a map. We know we, we should have been going into these doors. The festivities are going on, but you don't know until you get there the actual, like, what you're walking into, right? Who's going to help you hold the doors? How about the restaurant next door? We had the windows open, to, uh, the doors open too long, and they're like, all their guests are getting cold, right? Yeah. So and that I was one no of my idea. points was having more efficient methods to bring our stuff in very quickly and very efficiently, I guess. Yeah. You know, because we're just trying to get it back to our spot. We had to walk all the way around the stage, but behind the scenes, right? Not disrupt the party. The guest didn't experience that, which is good, right? right. But it's so funny what we might go through, what the people that are going to get our food had no idea. Yeah. So like we always make it happen when we roll up and we, we try very hard to get as many details as possible, but I kind of just chalk it up sometimes knowing that they're not going to tell me all the information I need. Even when I feel like I'm asking the questions, there's always something that wasn't clarified. That's why I feel like in a good way, we're actually more on top of it sometimes than they are, or at least we try to be. You know, we, we reached out, should we bring the card in ahead of time? That's the, I thought that would have been a great idea is that if, if we would have brought the card in well before the reception even made it there, and it's just sitting as a prop in the corner, you know, you know or it could have even been covered if they wanted it to be a surprise, but the bulk of our equipment would have been just sitting there waiting for us to then show up at 930 or whatever and, and, and get our service ready, you know? Right, because they do have that garage door, which we couldn't utilize because the event was going on and yeah. we were serving in the complete opposite corner of the garage door entry. Yeah. So we weren't gonna roll in there with the hot dog cart and roll across the floor, like you said, this big 12, 13 foot thing that is pretty heavy when yeah. you have everything on it. And just like, hey, everyone, please move out of the way. And like, we're tracking in snow and salt and stuff. Um, I forewarned the lady about that. I said, where yeah. are we going to be setting up in relation to where we could come in? Yeah. So she changed the entryway. I had all that stuff documented, but that still didn't mean it was going to go down smooth. I had to go right. in, find a guy to come help us, get the doors open. We had to go in these doors behind the stage, past all the catering crew that were emptying dishes and there's glassware and everything in the way. And we're like stopping the entire operation to say, can we please get behind to go to the other side to then come through more doors and end up on the other side of the stage. Right. And from her perspective, you, she could think it's easy. Oh yeah. I just told them what those go through and everything it should be a, a good path for them to go. But in the moment of what they're working on, you know, they're clearing dinner dishes They're they're, it was crazy to see their operation, right? <laughs> they're, they are frantically clearing all these dishes, putting them away, trying not to break anything. And then here we come with this big piece of equipment that we're trying to maneuver around them, right. you know, and shout out to them and their their credit. They quickly moved everything and made a path for us, you know, right. But that did, could we honestly took an extra 10 minutes or something that if we didn't account for that, or if we weren't on top of our game and prepared, if we were running late, it would have made us yeah. late, you know? Yeah. So that was an interesting experience. And I felt like that's kind of what caused us to want to make this podcast about retros because there's so many things to teach ourselves and to teach other people about you know, your first time doing things like there's things here that we're giving that is just like, you're not going to think about it. Right. We didn't know what to expect. We're like, we're just going to figure it out because after five years, we're so used to having to adjust on the fly. Yeah. But everything you, you take in is like a learning point for the next time. I think that's a great point too, is because you're going to always adjust in the flight. You're going to always need to be able to be uh, nimble on your feet with it. But you would rather do that after being pre maximally prepared and then adjusting on the fly or, or having to be flexible. But if you're if you're only being flexible, if you're only like, I'm just going to wing it every time, I'm going to wing it every time, you're going to fall short, I think. Right. You're not documenting uh, best practices. You're right. not taking in to account like things that help you close a sale or things that are like give people confidence to say, you're not going to have a single issue on that right. day. If I could go back now, in hindsight, I offered the lady the ability to bring the car early in the day. Yeah. She deemed it wasn't necessary. Again, she's just the event coordinator of that space, yeah. not of the wedding, not the wedding planner. She's right. not there that night saying like, seeing what the chaos could have been. Yeah. And now going back for almost any venue, unless there was a straightforward shot to like, you come in here and you're just right there. Yeah. I'm like, I want to bring this thing early. And if you don't want to see the hot dog cart in the corner, 
I want to get some sort of tarp, some sort of fancy thing that looks like a luxury car is being covered or something. And right. It has like a tag on it. Of like, to like hide yeah, it, right? Whatever it is to say like, okay, this is now acceptable to be visible in my wedding space. That's fine. You're giving gamify it later and like rip that cover yeah, off. Yeah, like all like, fancy. We're here to do something with. But then we can just walk in with some extra supplies yeah. that we need to operate and just show up and that thing is there versus disrupting everything that got disrupted yeah. that didn't need to be. We can just show up, operate, and then you know, if you want to talk at all about the breakdown, like, right. And, but I was about to say too, is, um, it's still ultimately in their control. It's their space. It's their events. But as we build up the experience we can really press upon them that, Hey, from our experience, it would be better for us to bring the card in early and, you know, and put it there and have it out of the way. Right. We had this experience last year. We walked in, it was cold. We, we didn't want to be, we weren't disruptive, but we, you know, we were walking a tightrope of not being disruptive. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, then to speak to the the breakdown that that like you have in your notes that was a bit chaotic, right? Because we we served for a pretty long time. I mean, no more than usual, but I think it was long relative to the wedding activities going on. There there was no clear uh, separation of when we were done and then the wedding ending and then everything happening at once, right? right. So this this wedding had a full band. They. Um, it was because of the space. I mean, you have more experience with this as you're planning your wedding, but all that stuff had to be moved out of there, right? It wasn't like it was at a banquet hall where maybe the tables and chairs were staying. So the people I think that were renting it from were trying to break down all the tables and chairs at the same time and get them out. They were breaking down the stage at the same time. And again, since we're on the opposite side of the room, we're trying to break down our operation and get across everything and get everything attached to my car and put away while they're loading box trucks and they're loading dishes and tables and chairs and everything, right? Right. And the guy even told us that, well, if you don't make it out of here within a certain time limit, you're not going to get out of here at three in the morning because it's just going to be impossible at that moment. Yeah, he warned us. He was the manager on site for the event space. And he was like, look, if <clears throat> if you don't get out of here, you're stuck here until three. Yeah. Like, me and you were like, oh, shit. And, yeah, and we didn't want that to happen. What really, what really sucked about that is because we were un- we didn't expect it, we started cleaning up so fast. Like yeah. We're really good at cleaning up the hot dog right. car. It's like a 15-minute job. Yeah. But also, when you're feeling rushed, things start to get a little bit more unorganized. And right. you're just kind of throwing things, trying to clean up and hurry up and get out of there. We still had some food. We are trying to wrap it up and leave it. And then uh, we were putting things in the car just wherever they fit, just so we can not get trapped there until 3 in the morning. And then if I could change some of our guidelines, it's like, hey, if your event actually ends at midnight, we recommend that – everything for us starts a half hour sooner like so that we're done by 11 yeah that's what i was trying to say there was no padding there between everything right. just ended at once oh. but we were all trying to cl- close down at the same time right? right and everyone has their own motivations or you know how, what's going to move them we're trying to shut down and you know it's midnight one in the morning we're trying to get home honestly yes if, if we could for some people it was just their mm-hmm. jobs were just starting if their job was to take the rental stuff and get it home maybe they, their shift was just starting yeah. and they're cool with that you know if, it, if for us we could say last call at 11 30 yeah. be done at 11 45 cleaning up almost fully cleaned up by midnight which is where, where we just started cleaning up at right. this point so we would have had plenty of time to properly clean up and get out of there without um getting stuck yeah so that was, if I could change anything about that, was the logistics, even though I thought I did a good job already. Oh, yeah. I thought I emailed, you know, my communication was great. But there's just things that, like, we don't know what we don't know. Like, when I do a site visit next time, I'm always going to do a site visit and ask questions in relation to the trailer and the cart to make sure everything could fit wherever they're thinking. So, hey, if I brought the cart in, where do you think it would be set up? It'd be yeah. set up over there? Oh, okay, well, if I'm coming at the middle of the night when the reception is going on, where would I bring the cart in? Right. You know, just all these questions. Access to, to waters or uh, being able to uh, dump our water, dump our, you know, garbage. Right. Like we collect our own garbage, right? We're very, uh, to give a impression, we're very self-sufficient while we're operating, but at the end of the night, we need to be able to throw away stuff. We need to be able to dump stuff. I mean, I think that's just common sense or, you know, expected. But having that stuff in mind ahead of time, so when we're all breaking down at the same time, the bartenders who are breaking on the bar, we're not disrupting them or we're not disrupting anyone else. And shout out to the staff. The, the staff at that place was awesome too. So yeah, overall it was a really good experience. We provided a great service. It sounds like we're like, oh, this was chaos. Oh, no. Truth is, when you roll up, a lot of times it is chaos. You just have to adjust. That's right. the nature of what we're doing. And the point of this is to call out, not to sit yeah. here and clap, uh, give ourselves a pat on the back for twenty minutes. It's to call out the whole event in a good way, and for us to learn from it, and for others to learn from it. Right. Right. So. Because you're going to have to keep showing up and keep on figuring out how to do things better. Right. So anytime now when we come in with a cart, we know that there's things to address that we didn't address. 
Yep. And yeah, because like you said, in normal operations, we are very good at breaking down the card and cleaning up really fast and efficiently. But we're also, we don't have the greatest experience with doing that indoors, um, maybe in an event where you don't want to cause a lot of noise or scene or running around and just so like maybe we need procedures for how do we collapse within ourselves to clean up really easily and pack it all into the cart or pack it into a, a dolly or mm -hmm. you know one of those two wheel and rolling platforms so it, um to your suggestion if we're closing down a half hour early like last call we're clean by midnight in this specific example and then we are just rolling out exactly you know? we have all our stuff collapsed onto itself because what happened instead is we did that but we were just throwing stuff on the car throwing garbage in it's there throwing over. stuff into the coolers so that we can get out of there as soon as possible right uh did you want to that kind of reminds me of just things everything being in disarray yeah when we rolled up like if you talk about the weather and how the, the condition of the cart oh yeah so that was one of my my points to cover was um, I mean, with it being Chicago, there was snow, so there was salt on the street the, from the plows and slush from the temperatures going up and down. And then we didn't cover the card. So I know we were talking about the covering the card if it was actively snowing or raining because we want to protect it from those active elements. But we should have thought to cover it regardless so that any kick up from the cart's tires, other cars on the street. Uh, when we showed up, the car was com not completely covered it had a lot of salt on the front of it right and so you and I were frantically trying to wipe that down and put it into a, a, a good looking place for, for the event for obvious reasons for presentation's sake yeah and that was a struggle in itself while we're trying to prepare to do our normal cooking and everything else right so one of my things is like we should have a tarp bungee cords everything ready to go and it's just get covered no matter what for transportation you know yeah there was salt I mean it wasn't like covered in salt, but there was salt all over the cart to yeah. the point where if I like licked my finger, I could taste salt. Yeah, and it was street salt. Right. So we literally had to sanitize the whole cart. Yeah, and we and we were able to do that, but again, just like the time it took to load and to get around the caterers, that's extra time that we didn't necessarily think to account for, right? So. Yeah, and that I just didn't expect it because the streets were Same. clear. Yeah, like everything was clear because we had rain and then we had freezing cold. Everything melted. And I was like, oh, it should be fine. Yeah. I didn't expect the, I didn't, I guess I underestimated how much salt was really on the streets at that right. point. Yeah. And I guess that's how our own cars end up white. Right. Black yeah. cars end up white from salt. So that's the luxury of living here. Right. But then <clears throat> just the full circle theme of it all as well, which is another procedure. Hey, everything's ready. The cart's packed. We throw this tarp over it, bungee cord up. Don't, it shouldn't matter if it's July. It's just because then it'll just be habit for no matter what the event is. Plus, as we we're always talking about training people and having people help us, we would want them to know that's the stand. You know, that's the SOP for whether it's July or December. Mm -hmm. You just do this, right? Yeah, I like it. Um, something that I had in regard to what else went wrong, not necessarily wrong, but we could have done better. Yeah. Um, the DJ or the band at any wedding is going to be so loud right. and we're not there to disrupt the band or DJ no. from the good time. But we genuinely couldn't hear when people were trying to order. I was walking around the cart and like putting my ear legit by their mouth. Yeah. Like, if you were busy with an order, yeah. I would walk up and take future orders like really close to them. Yeah. Right. So that I, I can get the, as close as possible. And that's the kind of full service because they're like, I want a hot dog. Uh, no, no, this, no, that, but you can't hear them, but you're trying to do full service. So you yeah. have to hear them uh, versus someone just putting condiments on it on their own. But I guess to, to that point, maybe we could have like a pile of little order sheets that have like hot dog burger and the available toppings and like a bunch of little pencils and they could literally just fill it out and give it to us. And it wouldn't be like, Oh, I got to do this. They'd be like, I completely understand. Like, yeah, I think it would make sense because it, it was hard to hear people and that can disrupt the quality mm -hmm. of our service or, you know, then you're, you're yelling or even we're there to provide professional service, but at some point you're getting frustrated because it's hard to provide a good service. Right. And then honestly, people are drinking and they don't understand. You can't hear them. They don't know if you're right. being rude or if you're just being incompetent. We're like, no, we just legitimately can't hear you. you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and so I think it would be great <clears throat> as a potential solution to have a bunch of little printouts of the menu. And then it's like, you just write your name and then check, the, the toppings kind of yeah. like what we did for house music fest even yeah. though that was a bad thing because they can literally give it to us yeah. and we could see it they're right there i'm like i got you i acknowledge that and i, I make your food yeah. but that doesn't inhibit anything else going on because they're not going to stop a party for the hot dog guys right right like we're there to to be invisible in a sense and that's another thing too is just knowing where we're going to be set up like it goes to your point you covered it but how, how it relates to this is we were 
what, 20 feet to the left of the stage. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we were probably even up. I, they have speakers everywhere, but I bet it was at one of the loudest places within the venue, right? Yeah. And, and we're, so we're between the stage and the bar. So we have people getting drinks. We have people socializing because it was an open, more open area. And yet we couldn't hear people. So Yeah. That was, for me, I was like, man, this is tough. Yeah. Like to keep taking their orders like this. Yeah. Ironically, the, I mean, ironic, but like for us who want to provide the service, the easiest ones were what people want plain dogs or only ketchup, only mustard and onions. But like, I heard that, right? Right. Um, and then to go off of that, I also was thinking about um, the uh, I didn't consider how dark it was going to be in the venue because obviously it's party time. Right. Like the lights are dim. They're they're dim to off. The DJ, the band, they're all playing. We couldn't see. Right. Like exactly. At a, at a certain point, the lights, they turned them off by us and we couldn't see. Yeah, it was just above. It was part of their AV show already, right? So we need to make sure we're coming yeah. prepared with all of our own lighting so right. that we could see the food. Um, like we were able to see the food, but see it better. If they're filling out notes for us to be able to fulfill their orders, we need to be able to see that. So just in general, nicer lighting that go with wedding vibes, but lighting that is also bright enough for us to be able to see everything. I guess in terms of what was awesome, I think people loved our food. Yeah. I think they were fascinated to see an actual hot dog cart in there, seeing us serve. Like, I mean, you think about hot dogs and burgers, but we're rolling up in polos and black jeans, right. looking pretty professional, making their food fresh. And we were able to network with the manager that was on site. He was like, I'm going to uh, let my, my supervisor know about you guys to do other events. Do you do only catering? Do you do vending? We're like, we pretty much do it all. We're like, we have the trailer. We have the cart. We, we do vending uh, events. We do catering events. We we're talking with the bartenders who didn't know about us. But the one guy was like, he loves hot dogs. I was telling him about everything we do. Just being able to network with people and put out business cards. Yeah, that, I think that was cool how... <laughs> The different like the, how you can we can break our own expectations of of what people expect from us in a good way, right? I mean, hot dog car. We're just going to show up and, and sling easy hot dogs. But like, like you said, we dress the occasion. We should, we we look professional. We fit in with the fact that it's a, a wedding. Um, and then I, also even just from the quality of service, I think a lot of people were surprised we were actually cooking on site, like right. literally cooking food from scratch on site. They're like you got burgers, you're making burgers fresh to order, like. Yeah. yeah, and if you've seen our service. if you've seen our hot dog cart, you would understand this too. You can't tell there's a flat top. Right, it's like an eight by ten griddle that you can't really see, and there's a grease shield over it, so it's even more hidden. But we can sling lots and lots of burgers off of that thing. Yeah, I think that's pr pretty much it for my pros and cons. You have more? Uh, no, I think we covered everything. Um, it is interesting. I think we kind of experienced too more people eating at the very end of it. Or like any party so as we probably go through more retros and just talk about events in general uh a lot of people especially if there's drinking involved you start to get hungrier at the end of your event and also when you see us start to clean up or the party's ending everyone kind of rushes there's over you know, feeling right yeah the urgency to like get something before it's gone <laughs> right but a, a part of our service is everything that's cooked we cook ample food we leave behind and they were able to take into the after party or grab on their way out if they were leaving right so. and another note too just I would love to get my own microphone, but oh. uh, to tell the DJ or the band, like, last call at the, yeah. at the late night food. And I would say that the event went so well that a few days later, even, we had, we got Zell the tip. Yeah, that was and they were like, cool. thanks for making everything amazing. Because, right, like, like, it, it does add to the to the vibe of it. It's like, they had a hot dog cart there, right. you know, it's, it's a cool thing. Yeah. But, all right, that's the pod. That's the pod. If you like this content... Please hit the subscribe button, press the like button, comment, give us your thoughts, give us your feedback, and ask us any questions that you want to know about what we're doing.